I wanted to find out why all the big corporations have their offices and some even their headquarters in this beautiful city of Dublin. Just like the answer to any subjective question can be a combination of several factors, a good way I believe to research this specific question would be to identify those factors. See, organizations are not people and their motivations, unlike you and I, aren't the number of clubs or the availability of public transport. Their fiduciary responsibility is to the shareholders to maximize the share value. Believe that may be a factor. A reason why organizations are opening their European headquarters at Silicon Docks in the tech area of the city. Let's dive deeper. Google is one of the companies thriving in Dublin with four buildings and more than 45,000 square meters of workspace. Plus, who knows how big of a space is dedicated to data centers. Okay, put down your pitchforks. I know what you're thinking. It's the 12% tax rate. Well, wrong. The primary reason is weather. Ireland's unique geographical location reduces the cooling capacity required by 10%. An average 40,000 square feet building with 8 feet ceilings in sunny Texas needs 86 tons instead of, imagine this, only 54 tons. At US electricity rates, which is about 10 to 13 cents, you're looking at $20,000 in monthly electricity bills. In Ireland, you can get away with just paying 6,000. That is 70% cheaper. Crazy, huh? But there's gotta be more to it. Are you ready to go down that rabbit hole? We look at three key factors that in my opinion are very important in getting a good grasp on this topic. Well, let's begin with water. The River Liffey is one of the key rivers that flows through the center of Dublin to its mouth within Dublin Bay. Dividing the north side of Dublin from the south side, the Liffey is today spanned by numerous bridges and they are all really beautiful and super unique. How is that a factor in our research? Well, along that river, you would find a lot of tech companies like Google, Facebook, Airbnb, and PayPal, Indeed, Microsoft, Twitter, eBay, LinkedIn. But why along the river? Could the answer lie in the ancient rivers of Tigris and Euphrates? Well, a lot of these very big civilizations have been associated with a source of water. The second most important resource needed for data centers or the society in general is water. A typical data center, which may house several thousand servers, can use between 2.9 million and 5 million gallons of water per day. So that's the factor number two. At the end of the day, it was time to go try the famous Temple Bar. Looking at the people around, I wonder if it was the urban life that attracted Silicon Valley companies to the city. Ireland is English speaking, very educated workforce with a mix of trendy corporate atmosphere and the industrial vibes. There is a vast variety of people here in Dublin. I found the people Hi. very friendly, not just in Dublin, but all over Ireland. Happier people lead to a low crime rate, another factor that makes Dublin a relatively safer city. Google, Apple, eBay, Facebook, Twitter, and many American companies have located their offices in Ireland. If a company has global operations, it probably has Irish headquarters. Some, like Apple, have made it to their EU headquarters, mainly due to the low corporate taxes, but also to have access to EU. Ireland now is a bigger advantage over the UK. And of course, starting 2020, I believe they're the only EU country with English as their official language. Bully for you, Ireland. Tell me down in the comments, especially if you're from Europe, and you speak English as your second language. Does Ireland making English as an official language give an advantage to Ireland? Next, let's look at the ease of doing business. The funding scene is amazing here. It's really good for startups and it's easier to get seed capital 
in this city. That's why it's driving a lot of innovation and hence the bigger companies can scoop these startups very easily. There are several accelerators and incubators that give an opportunity for these companies to find their product market fit. Easy access to the highest levels of the state, ministers will talk with industrialists, department secretaries will explain what is possible and what is illegal. We have a constitution which is smaller in a lot of the areas with American law. Ireland's Industrial Development Authority, the IDA, has been the world's most successful attracting foreign direct investments and its structure and operations are amongst the most copied around the world. The fact that all the big names in big tech and big pharma are in Ireland draws in all the others. If it works for them, it'll work for us. The European Court of Justice recently found for Ireland that Apple Corporation tax payments were a matter of Ireland. This tells multinationals that Ireland will go to bat for them. It would have been much easier for Ireland to just take $13 billion and say thank you. Looks like the Irish are better at delayed gratification. They had 800 years of practice of waiting for our friends to decamp. Irish politicians are happy to be in photos with business people. There's a story back in the 80s when IBM was looking at setting up their office in Ireland. The head of IBM visited Germany, UK and Ireland. On landing in Germany, he took a taxi to meet the deputy official in the ministry. On landing in UK, he took a taxi to meet the minister. On landing in Dublin, he was met by the prime minister while stepping off his aircraft. Needless to say, he chose Ireland. For many, it's merely a tax dodge to avoid the US corporate tax. Profits made in the US are instead declared in Ireland and they pay much less tax. So finally, here are the factors that we looked at. Data centers require cooling and the weather helps. Water is plenty around Dublin, so that makes it a good choice. The work environment is trendy and people are fun. Great startup environment and people speak English. This city has a great infrastructure. Finally, ease of doing business. The government policies are business friendly and IDA is well run and super helpful. How has Ireland become so wealthy despite the history of being poor and oppressed? Is this wealth going to help the citizens of the nation? And is the Irish strategy something that all the nations could adopt?